Welcome to Ex-Mormon Bible Study. Today we're going to be dissecting the differences in how the Mormon Church teaches the law of tithing versus how the Bible teaches it. To start, this quote in a 2001 Liahona says, The Lord doesn't need our money. If he wanted to, he could finance his church in a different way, but he chooses to use money and tithing. Continuing on, it says the law of tithing is given not so much to benefit the church financially as to bless the individual tithe payers spiritually. Tithing is about faith, not just money. So their point is that God really doesn't need your money, but he's definitely still going to ask for it. However, if we look in the Old Testament, we see that Moses was building his sanctuary and the people were paying him tithes and bringing him the offerings to help build it. And he tells them, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. So Moses, even though they were bringing him all their tithes and offerings, he said, well, we have more than enough. You can stop paying your tithing and offerings now. Thank you. In the church's program for personal finance and self-reliance, it teaches if paying tithing means you can't pay for water or electricity, pay tithing. If paying tithing means you can't pay your rent, pay tithing. If paying tithing means you don't have enough money to feed your family, pay tithing. That sounds like what the Pharisees probably told the widow who cast in her last two mites to pay her temple tax, which was her obligatory tax to the theocracy of Israel. They watched her go home and probably couldn't feed her children, couldn't pay her rent or her mortgage, and they devoured her house. In Proverbs, it says, whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. It's kind of saying karma's gonna bite you in the butt. This next little snippet comes from a family home evening teaching manual, which is still available on the church website. And in here, it's giving a simulation, something to do with your family, where it gives you a budget, it tells you what all your expenses are, and it tells you to just pay all your bills and see what's left. And it says, uh-oh, there's not enough money left for tithing. So they have you redo the simulation, and you said, if there's not enough money to pay all the bills, you should first pay your tithing. Then you pay a portion of what you owe on each other. Other bill. However, in the Bible it says if anything is borrowed, full restitution must be made, and the wicked borrows but does not pay back. In a 2013 conference talk, they taught, the Lord has established the law of tithing, and because it is his law, it becomes our obligation to observe it, if we love him. In this way, it becomes a debt. However, in the New Testament, it was taught that each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, we all know that the LDS Church likes to say that they don't have paid clergy. However, they do have to have this disclaimer on their FAQ that the general authorities don't get paid, but they do get a living allowance, which is just a fancy word for payment or compensation. And how much do they get compensated? Well, according to the Widow's Might report, as of 2024, it's getting pretty close to $200,000 a year. I often hear that they get this modest compensation because they leave their jobs, just like the FAQ said, and so this pays for their living expenses. Now for this one, I'm gonna use the Book of Mormon because this is contrary to their favorite righteous King Benjamin, who did not seek for gold or silver or any manner of riches, and he himself labored with his own hands that he would serve. So while the church says that all the authorities leave their jobs so that they can serve the church, their righteous King Benjamin labored with his own hands and he did not ask for any money from the people or the church. Now, they also like to claim that the church authorities are not paid from tithing funds, but church financial investments. And if we look at the Widow's Might report, we see here that these are all the church expenses that they paid for with tithing and fast offerings for those purposes. But then we see this red arrow that is invested surplus tithing, and it looks like almost 550 million of surplus tithing that they put into the stock market. So really, it's just a roundabout way of saying that the tithing paid for the investments, which then paid the general authorities. And then you have to think about back in 1907, when Joseph F. Smith said that there would be a time when they would not have to ask for any money from the people, no tithing, no donations or anything, because they would be self-sufficient.